Check, check. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to track one, day three of the Big O here live in Eugene, Oregon. We have the Texas Roller Girls firing squad taking on the Philly Roller Girls Independence Dolls. And I'm going to run you through the Independence Dolls rosters real quick. Skating this morning, number 11, Young MC. 1369, Wendy Whiplash. 152 is Herman Munster. 1800, Sue Eastside Hotline. 21, Leia Out Ali. 300, Long John. Number 33, Legend of the Hit and Trample. 357, Trixie Trauma. 37, Lex Ray Specs. 63, The Cyclone. 67, Slam Shine Alley. 88, Kong. A55, Kick Ash and UH0H zip block. And the roster for the firing squad. Zero is Booty Queen. Number 10, B Money. 202, Debella DeBall. 230, Barbie Got Back. 404, Peace War. 410, Babyface Assassin. Five. Uh, 51, Shiner Blonde, 52, Ruby Ring, 77, Centerfold, 808, 808, Sideshow Ho, 812, Cease and Desist, 86, Sandy Ravage, 914, Virgo Vengeful, and 505, Dolores Fuertes. And 310. 310, Notorious D.I.E. My apologies, I thought she wasn't rostered this morning. Yeah, I think they had some a couple of last minute changes to the roster, so it hadn't been updated yet. But she is out there, number 310. I swear. That is the first whistle of the Texas firing squad, the B team from Texas against the Philly Independence Dolls, the B team from Philly. Suicide hotline number 1-800 is jamming for Philly against Barbie Got Back. Barbie Got Back already lead jammer for Texas. And in case you hadn't noticed, Texas in the black, Philly in the red. Barbie Got Back easily slides past Lex Ray Specs, completes the pass, four, four points for Texas. Texas an early jump in this bout, 30 seconds off the period clock to start. Both teams with one skater in the penalty box, blockers at 3-3 to start this next jam. That is Peace War on the jam line for Texas. And that is Young MC for the Independent Stalls. One blocker each in the penalty box. It's Sandy Ravage for Texas and Legend of the Hit and Trample for Philly. It's a three on three in the pack. Peace War looks for the outside lane, runs into Kick Ash and Slam Shine Alley, but batters her way through. She is lead jammer, Texas, two lead jammers in a row. Young MC looks like she got a severe hit. Rolls off of the track though. Or the referees. Uh, exercise their discretion. She's very close to the track, so they want to make sure that no one runs into her. The side show, side show ho getting a penalty as a result of that hit here in between turns one and two. She is reported to the penalty box. Yeah, I think that was a right decision by the referees. The pack was right there and they were imminently about to any one wrong hit could easily have knocked several members of the pack right onto her. But as a technical uh, matter, she will not be able to serve, uh, she will not be able to skate in the next three jams. I'm speaking very softly because they are right in front of, the, our, of our announcing station, so I don't want to disturb them. She is being tended to by the EMT. She is back up and skates back over to the Philly bench on her own. As Bulldog mentioned, sh sh the Independence Dolls will be without her skating services for the next three jams. It's Herman Monster lining up for the Independence Dolls and Babyface Assassin jamming for the firing squad. It's a three on two pack advantage for Philly. Two blockers from Texas in the penalty box. Herman Monster gets out very quickly. 
First time lead jammer for the Philly Independence Dolls, but Babyface Assassin completes her initial pass. In fact, Texas lost another blocker, so only Dolores Fuertes, number 505, was left in the pack. Well, it was Dolores. Texas. It was Dolores Fuertes' offense that got her jammer out in that jam. And that puts Philly on the board for the first time in the game. Score four to seven in favor of Texas with uh, just under 28 minutes in the, in the first half. Four to two blocker advantage in favor of Philadelphia to start the next jam. Looks like that's Barbie got back on the jam line for the firing squad. That is a kick, no, it is Suicide Hotline, 1-800-SUICIDE-HOTLINE. Finds the inside lane, Saicho Ho comes in, but not in time to close the gap. Suicide Hotline is lead jammer for Philly, but Barbie got back, getting out of the pack as well. Suicide Hotline had a wide open inside lane, but that, that got shut with a quickness by Virgo Vengeful and a shoulder check, but she does get all the way through. Philly now, Taking the lead over Texas, eight to seven. Three minutes gone here in the first half of play. Zip block lining up on the jam line for Philadelphia. That's peace war for the firing squad. Texas still down a blocker. And the three one zero notorious D.I.E. in the penalty box. So four on three pack advantage. Zip block brushes off a hip check from Booty Queen, but gets caught by Sandy Ravage, number 86 of Texas. As Peace War, the Texas jammer, gets out. Now lapping the opposing jammer, but Zip block did manage to get lead jammer. So Peace War, I think she came up empty. Zip block calling off the jam just in time. Zero point differential there. Zip block hearing the yells from her teammates on the bench area to call off that jam. Did not appear that she knew that she had uh, been declared lead jammer. She just barely got her hips out front. The referee saw it, it signaled lead jammer, but she instantly got knocked out and drawn back into the pack. But she saw it in time. That's the important thing for Philly. Long John jamming for Philadelphia against Babyface Assassin once again. You can tell it's Babyface Assassin because you can't see her at all. <laughs> it must be Babyface Assassin. We definitely one, I think 410 is her height. I think that's what that is. No, but she is, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm making light of it, but she is so fast and nimble. She's a fantastic jammer for Texas. But Long John, the exact opposite, to be quite honest. I think uh, that's her height in no, never mind. That's enough of that. J Long John is the lead jammer on a first scoring pass. Babyface Assassin gets out, but she's a half a lap behind Long John. But Long John, in a storm of defense, gets repelled to the back of the pack. Calls off the jam. Not in time. Babyface Assassin gets all the way through. Four points for Texas, only two for Philly. That is four lead jams in a row for the independent stalls. We get ready to set the next jam. Texas retaking the lead in that last jam, 11 to 10. That is Barbie got back on the line for the firing squad. She is opposite. Sue Eastside hotline for the independent stalls. Suicide hotline gets goes back and forth by the three wall of Texas blockers in her way at every step. Dolores Fuertes, notorious D.I.E. and Sandy Ravage holding her at the back of the back. And there was Barbie got back through the pack for lead jammer. Texas in the black, Philly in the red. Barbie got back, hits the pack. A little defensive jamming from Suicide Hotline, but then all attention focuses on the scoring pass of Barbie got back and Suicide Hotline able to get around the outside. But uh, in fact, I think Texas may have actually led her through on that one. That's actually a strategy to reduce their, because if you if you keep the jammer in, that gives the, the other team a, one more blocker. But if you let her through, she's not scoring any points and they have one less. You are absolutely right on that. During that jam, Kong sent to the penalty box for the independence dolls. And that was Dolores Flertis picking up a multiplayer block in that last jam. Three on three in the pack to start. 
That only works though if you have lead jammer and you know you only want one scoring pass. <laughs> but uh, Herman Monster gets out quickly for and lead jammer goes to Philly. But uh, Peace War out right behind about a quarter lap. Herman Monster runs into C's and assist. They both fall down. She calls off the jam, doesn't get any points for Philly. And look at that, Peace War getting in three points for Texas. They Once again, they win, even though they did not get lead jammer. Peace War jumping the corner of turn one into the apex, landed the jump, incidental contact with a couple of skaters on the track. After landing that, no call. She was allowed to return to her bench area. We've got Wendy Whiplash on the line for the Independence Dolls. And the Excuse me, Young MC, and that is Babyface Assassin for the firing squad. And look at that speed on number 410. She got lead jammer right off the line. Young MC not having so much fun. Virgo Vengeful with a glancing blow, but Young MC able to get out. Now, Babyface Assassin on her first scoring pass to the outside, dodges past Ziploc. But gets forced out of bounds by Layout Ali. But calls it off in time, three to zero, Texas. Booty Queen being sent to the penalty box for a high block near the end of that jam for Texas. They will start down a blocker. Lex Ray specs on the jam line for the Independence Dolls, and that is Peace War wearing the star for the firing squad. Four on three pack advantage once again. Booty Queen in the penalty box for Texas. Billy with one more blocker. Lex Ray specs to the outside, gets thwarted by Centerfold and Sideshow Ho. Knocked to the ground now by that double team. Peace War runs into Trixie Trauma, but they both fall down. But Peace War scrambles back up and comes out for lead. Lex Ray specs at the front of the pack. Ruby Ring and Sideshow Ho with a two wall. Now it's just Ruby Ring. She can't hold her in. Lex Ray specs is out. But there is Peace War on a scoring pass, leaning into Legend of the Hit and Trample, forcing her way past. Turns around, calls off the jam. Oh, one point stolen off the back of the pack by Lex Ray Specs. Well, they did get one point. However, they're losing Legend of the Hit and Trample to the penalty box for a multiplayer block. Now it is Texas's firing squad that will start the next jam with a four to three blocker advantage. That's right, and Peace War did get did get four points on that last jam. No points in the last four jams for Philly. One point in the last four jams for Philly. Barbie got back jamming for Texas once again. Philly with a three wall in the back. But Barbie got back gets between Get be gets between Long John and Kick Ash to complete her initial pass and lead jammer. Suicide Hotline fights off Notorious D.I.E. to get out. But half a lap behind Barbie got back. Barbie with plenty of space. Gets between Long John and Trick C. Trauma. Gets the ghost point for Legend of the Hidden Trample. Only three points though for Texas, not all four. I jumped the corner last second there on turn two, landed that. That allowed her to pick up the three points. Texas starting the next jam with that one blocker advantage and a, an advantage on the scoreboard of 18 as we are 10 minutes into this bout. Babyface Assassin jamming for Texas and Herman Monster jamming for Philly. Philly in the red, Texas in the black. Herman Monster, number 152 for Philly, is surrounded by Texas blockers. He sees nothing but a sea of black jerseys. Babyface Assassin up ahead, running at the zip block, gets around her. Does she? <laughs> yes, she <laughs> Up on the inside, gets forced out of bounds by Legend of the Hit and Trample, fresh from the penalty box. Herman Monster is out, but Babyface Assassin calls off the jam. Does not get any points though. No, did have the wherewithal to realize that she had been declared lead jammer and did call off the jam prior to giving up any points. Both teams down one blocker to start the next jam as we see Peace War lining up on the jam line opposite Sue Eastside hotline. And the penalties continue to flow. Both teams down one blocker. Ruby Ring for Texas and 
Layout Ali for Philly. So three on three in the pack. Suicide hotline on the outside trying to get past Notorious D.I.E. But Peace War, the jammer for Texas, runs into Slam Shine Alley. Scrambles back up, gets around Lex Ray Specs and Kong to get lead jammer. Five lead jams in a row for the firing squad. Peace War back around, hits the pack on a scoring pass, whips past Kong, runs into Slam Shine Alley, who puts up a fight, but Peace War gets through. Four points, Texas. There goes Suicide Hotline, runs to Notorious D.I.E., instantly knocked out of bounds, but Notorious D.I.E. goes out as well and recycles right along with Suicide Hotline behind her teammates. But in the meantime, Peace War picking up another four. Firing squad choosing to continue to run this jam, but a back block picked up by the firing squad jammer, power jam independent stalls. And a two minute jam, no lead jammer for this jam. A grand slam on Suicide Hotline's first scoring pass of this power jam. But it's four on three. Texas at, Texas has all four blockers on the track. Dolores went Fuertes. <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. Dolores Fuertes. That actually means uh, like a form of pain. Like a <laughs> That's what I'm told. Instead of Fuentes, which is uh, M MTV DJ. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, suicide Hotline. On a, this is a second scoring pass of the power jam and great penalty kill by Texas. Peace War back in action and instantly completes her scoring pass that she was on when she got the penalty. Suicidal Hotline knocked out of bounds by Sandy Ravage as Peace War sneaks up and actually knocks Slam Shine Alley out of bounds. And she, Slam Shine Alley, just to be safe, goes ahead and recycles. Peace War comes up again. So Peace War is gonna, it looks like she's gonna outscore Philly even though she gave up a power jam. Lockdown defense by Notorious D.I.E. against Sue Side Hotline. Now Sue Side Hotline during that power jam did pick up the first five points for Philly in the previous five jams. Texas looking very strong early in the game. We're at uh, f clock frozen at 16 minutes, 28 seconds in the first half. This is our first team timeout taken by Philadelphia. And that was the biggest jam by either of these teams in that last jam. Texas establishing their lead now 49 to 20. Independence Dolls using their first of three timeouts. That whistle signal the end of the team timeout. First team timeout taken by Philly. Texas still has all three timeouts remaining. 16-28 on the clock in the first period. Even, even though the display says P2, it's actually the first period. Uh, 20 points for Philly, 49 for Texas. Now we've got Long John jamming for Philly, but there goes Barbie got back, shaken off kick ash and getting out for lead jammer. Long John gets forced out of bounds by Centerfold, has to recycle as Barbie got back, weaves right through the back, gets around Trixie Trauma. Kick Ash headed to the penalty box on a track cut. Against a blocker, you don't see that nearly as often as against jammers, but it does happen. Barbie got back, picking up a grand slam. That's grand slam. That's scoring pass number two for Texas. Now dodges past Lex Ray Specs easily. Runs into Long John, who gives a little bit of defense. But Long John now finally getting the free pass she was looking for. But she's already been lapped a couple of times by Barbie Got Back. And now a little, a little leap across that infield gets Barbie Got Back another grand slam. Big jam for Texas. We're gonna see both teams, no, we are not. I thought we were gonna see both teams at full strength to start the next jam, not quite. Philly Independence Dolls with one blocker in the penalty box. Four to three pack advantage for Texas. That is Babyface Assassin on the jam line for Texas and Young MC for the Independence Dolls. 
Babyface Assassin looking for the inside lane. Gets stopped by Herman Monster. Daisy Fuertes. <laughs> Dolores Fuertes helping her out. Now Babyface Assassin facing a four wall. That is Zip Block, the Cyclone Kick Ash, and Herman Monster for Philly holding up the Texas Jammer. Daisy Dolores Fuertes. Now I've got the D the MTV DJ or VJ or whatever it is now stuck in my head. Dolores Fuertes helping out her jammer, but Babyface Assassin still on her initial pass. Young MC of Philly forced to go back now behind Dolores Fuertes and Notorious D.I.E. And Sandy Ravage coming across. And, and she draws the cut on Young MC of Philly. So it's going to be a power jam. Texas Babyface Assassin on her first scoring pass. And just rides the razor's edge of the outside lane. Somehow not going out of bounds and gets the grand slam. Seven lead jams in a row for the firing squad. Babyface Assassin on her second scoring pass. She gets out away from Kick Ash and out races the Cyclone out of the pack. Second grand slam, 10 points for Texas. Babyface Assassin just absorbs a shoulder check from Kick Ash and again out races the Philly defense to come out with another Grand Slam. 15 points Texas so far. That's the end of the power jam. Young MC back on the track circling around, but she will still be on her initial pass, so not scoring any points. Babyface Assassin on scoring pass number four. Kick Ash and Ziploc, her and Herman Monster holding a, in a three wall in Delta formation, knocking Babyface Assassin out of bounds. But the Texas defense having very su good success holding back Young MC. That sideshow host Andy Ravage and Dolores Fuertes. But Dolores Fuertes going to the penalty box, but time runs out on that one. For Dolores, that was a track cut penalty that sent her to the penalty box. Uh, that's a sizable loss for Texas. Dolores has played great defense and offense for the firing squad so far this bout. Firing squad going to start the next jam with two blockers, three blockers in the penalty box. Independence Dolls with one. So four, a, a three on one pack right now, but Notorious D.I.E. all by herself, slowing down Suicide Hotline. But Suicide Hotline does manage to get out for lead jammer. Peace War driven out of bounds and drawn back almost to the jammer line by Wendy Whiplash. Comes back in, now neck and neck with the Philly jammer, but Suicide Hotline of Philly on her first scoring pass. A avoids a hip check from Centerfold gets around Notorious D.I.E. and grabs a Grand Slam for Philly. That is Philly's first lead jam in the last eight. Peace War getting away from Wendy Whiplash but just completing her initial pass. Suicide Hotline on scoring pass number two runs into Notorious D.I.E. and Dolores Fuertes. Suicide Hotline calling off the jam in time. No, not in time. Dolores Fuertes, who got out of the penalty box in that jam, appears to be headed back there for the firing squad. But the firing squad did pick up two points just off the back of the pack. Four points in the last scoring pass for Suicide Hotline. Three on three in the pack to start the next jam. Long John on the jam line for the Independence Dolls. Barbie got back wearing the star for the firing squad. It looks like we've got an official timeout down on the track. Trying to get confirmation as to whether or not this is an official review. It is still listed as a timeout, and we have not gotten any indication that it is an official review, but both coaches out talking to the referee crew in the center of the track. So, so far, Texas 
Given the fact that the coach for the firing squad has returned to his bench area and the coach and captain of the Independence Doll is still in the center of the track, away from the group of referees, I'm going to go ahead and assume this is an official review. That was confirmation that this is an official review. So during this official review, real quickly, for lead jammers, Texas with 10 so far, Philly with six, each team with one power jam, Ah, uh, and three multi-scoring, multi-pass, multiple pass scoring for Texas. Two jams with multiple scoring passes for Philly. Once again, this is an official review requested by Texas. We don't have the details yet, right, but right now the referee's discussing the details of the uh, review. Looks like our head referee over addressing the coach and coaches and the captain from the Independence Dolls. All right, what about the cowfish? What about the cowfish? Cowfish Dance Club and Lounge, 62 West Broadway with great cocktails and daily drink specials. That's the cowfish. So sometimes you need a little sizzle pie. Sizzle pie at the corner of Broadway and Eleven. Yeah, the false pizza. The official review was regarding the insubordination penalty called on Black 505. The question was, was Black 505 communicated with visually and audibly? The ruling is that while she was communicated with audibly, she was not communicated with in a, a manner that allowed her to visually recognize that she was being assessed a penalty. Therefore, the insubordination will be removed and she will serve only one penalty in the penalty box. All right, so Dolores Fuertes, who had been sent to the penalty box for the firing squad, had been sent there for a track infraction and then was given an insubordination penalty for not leaving the track in a timely manner. That official review questioned that call and as you may have heard going out over the house microphone, that second penalty was overturned. 
So only one 30-second penalty to be served by Dolores Fuertes, but Lex Ray Specs of Philly also in the penalty box, so both teams down on blocker. Barbie got back up the inside of Kickash and gets out for Lee Jammer. Long John, the jammer for Philly in the red. Oh, gets knocked down by Centerfold, running into Sandy Ravage, has to recycle as Barbie got back. The Texas jammer gets into the back on her first scoring pass, gets around Kick Ash, gets a grand slam. Lex Ray Specs returning to the track right behind Barbie got back as Barbie gets through, just slaloms right through a diagonal center line and completes the pass. Second grand slam for Texas, 10 points so far. Long John slamming her shoulder into Sandy Ravage and finally gets out, but fully two, no, three laps behind Barbie got back. Barbie got back on scoring pass number three, absorbs a shoulder from Kickass. Kickass trying to hold on, but Barbie got back, able to thrust forward and gets out. Only four points on this one. That's because Long John did get out of the pack. So only eligible for four. But now can now she's gonna lap Long John again. And around the outside, kick ass just gets a glancing blow, and just enough to knock down Barbie got back, but doesn't get her out of bounds. Barbie scrambles back up and completes Dolores. the pass. Gets a grand slam. 19 Dolores, points over. Dolores Fuertes is reporting to the penalty box once again for the firing squad. So I guess she got that extra penalty after all, but this time she earned this one, though, presumably. Long John completing a scoring pass as Barbie got back, goes to the penalty box. She was on her fifth scoring pass, but got a back block penalty. So we don't know how many points she got on, on that scoring pass, but Long John on her second scoring pass now. Five points already in her pocket. Sees and assist, and Sandy Ravage holding on though, keeping her from getting fully out of the pack, but she does get all five points. And it looked like one point being held by the firing squad jam ref, so they are credited with that. But it appears as though Long John was sent to the penalty box at the end of that jam. So we are actually going to start this next jam with no jammer on the track, barring an official review, of course. But Barbie got back standing in the penalty box. She'll be released as soon as the first whistle blows. And we have an official hold. review. There's your official review. <laughs> You called it, Mike. Well, now, I did not see the call that uh, was responsible for sending Long John to the penalty box, but it happened at the very, very end of that jam. The jam had been uh, whistled off, and she was still on the track. I'm sure we will find out exactly what that call was and whether or not it stands here momentarily. Oh, and just for the record, Texas, it appears that Texas did successfully get their review and the scoreboard showing that Texas still has an official review. The head referee has that discretion under the latest version of the rules to give back the official review if it is determined to be an official, uh, one of the officials made an error. Doesn't always happen, but it is the discretion of the head referee under the latest set of the rules. So we have the head referee addressing both coaches there in the center of the track, as you see on your screen. All right, and we are going to get the clarification. Red was questioning the high block assessed on the jammer. Red's jammer made initial contact to the chest of the opposing skater, but uh, repeated contact and forcible contact above the shoulder after that. The call will stand. All right, so Long John, jammer for the Independence Dolls in that previous jam, had initiated blocks using her shoulder to the chest area of the opposing blocker, but the repeated blocking resulted in hitting above the shoulder, and thus the high block does stand. 
That's a one disadvantage to that kind of height, the long jump. Uh, clearly the tallest skater out on the track right now in this game. And so she may have simply been standing up and that alone could have raised her shoulder up to above, uh, above shoulder level. But uh, that is the way that, that's the way it goes. Barbie got back now on a power jam at the beginning of this jam. Still on her initial pass. Long John released shortly after. It was a jammer swap out, as we as you noted, Mike. But Long John oh, is not gonna get around into scoring position. Independence, or excuse me, firing squad with one blocker in the penalty box. And that was zip block headed to the penalty box for the independence dolls on an elbow penalty. Babyface 25 points so far, Long John 16. Barbie got back with 52. So he's suicide hotline jamming for Philly on the outside. Ruby Ring just barely manages to force her out of bounds. She has to recycle. And there goes Sideshow Ho, 808, jamming for Texas, gets out for lead jammer. But Suicide Hotline takes advantage of a moment of distraction, drives straight up the center line, completing her initial pass just ahead of Sideshow Ho. And Sideshow Ho, though, making short work of the pack. Four points, Texas. Legend of the Hit and Trample reporting to the penalty box. Courtesy of a direction of play penalty, Independence Dolls now going to start the next jam down. Two blockers, zip blocks still in the penalty box from the jam, from the penalty picked up in the previous jam. Peace War with the star for firing squad. There's the whistle, just under seven minutes remaining in the first half. Don't believe your screen. It is actually the first period one. Probably not going to get that fixed in the, before the end of the half, but uh, Peace War way out front. Kick Ash making last contact for Philadelphia Independence Dolls. But she is lead jammer Peace War of Texas. The young MC number 11, forced out of bounds on the inside by Cease and Desist, recycled successfully, but is by, now behind Peace War. Peace War is eligible for that lap point, but young MC avoids Notorious D.I.E. I think Notorious D.I.E. may have thought she managed to get her to graze out of bounds, but young MC stayed inside. And now is on a scoring pass, goes through untouched. Texas caught completely by surprise. I think they were focused on Peace War, who was struggling on her first scoring pass. So now Young MC on her second scoring pass, Peace War getting repulsed at every turn by Philadelphia. The Texas firing squad blockers sees and assist and centerfold in a two wall, but the Young MC dodges to the outside, gets the grand slam for Philadelphia. And this, right now it's looking like Philadelphia may win this jam. Peace War in control of the clock, but just absolutely getting thwarted. And a kick ash and slam shine alley, double teaming, getting Peace War out of bounds again. Third scoring pass right now for Philadelphia Independence Dolls jammer Young MC, but she's looking a little winded out there, don't you think, Mike? Well, and she keeps getting pushed, repeatedly moved to the inside and outside. Kick Ash using Zip Block as a battering ram, forcing her to the outside of turn one there at the end of that jam. Interesting decision by the firing squad to continue that jam. They did have the ability to call it off. Uh, Peace War and their bench decided to keep duking it out, though. Yeah, maybe some tunnel vision on the part of Texas briefly. This is, I think, possibly the first mistake, well, in my opinion, I think the first mistake that uh, Texas has made. They've been, played an, a nearly flawless game up to now, I mean, uh, aside from a few penalties here and there, but everybody does that. Herman Monster out first for lead jammer Philadelphia, starting to showing a little bit of momentum now. Uh, Herman Monster is lead jammer, but Babyface Assassin gets around Wendy Whiplash to complete her initial pass. Half a lap though behind Herman Monster. Herman Monster instantly knocked out of bounds by Ruby Ring, but calls off the jam before Babyface Assassin can get in there. Well, Babyface Assassin taking a body whip off of Ruby Ring to get through on that four, on that initial pass. Four points picked up by the Independence Dolls. Suicide hotline on the jam line for the Independence Dolls. Opposite. That was opposite. Barbie got back. 
I forgot her number just for a second there. 230, Barbie got back. Not 310. Uh, but Barbie got back, it's Lee Jammer very quickly. She's been really consistent about that throughout most of the game. Suicide Hotline trying to get around Booty Queen on the outside. Looks for the inside line, but Sideshow Ho is there. So Suicide Hotline back and forth, not getting anywhere in the back. Forced out of bounds, has to recycle. Barbie got back on a scoring pass. Lead Jammer running into Kong, number 88, and number 33, Legend of the Hit and Trample. Gets around both of those. Little parting blow from Legend of the Hit and Trample, but it's a grand slam for Texas. Texas is Barbie got back. Triangle defense up front by the firing squad. We've seen that kind of defense employed by the Tex executioners. Suicide hotline making sure that she was still legally in bounds there. Barbie got back, gets through for another grand slam. Suicide hotline finally getting away from side show ho of Texas to complete her initial pass, but Barbie got back is going to call it off. Texas is stifling defense. A large reason for the 70 point difference between these two teams as time is winding down here in the first half of play. Texecutioners sending number 77 centerfold, or excuse me, the firing squad sending centerfold to the jam line. And Herman Monster, number 152, finally making herself visible to us over at the commentator table. But she gets through for lead jammer twice in a row that she's jammed. She's gotten lead jammer for the independent stalls. Centerfold knocked out of bounds, recycles, still on her initial pass, runs into Trixie Trauma. But Herman Monster muscling her way past sees and assistant Sandy Ravage. She's going to get five points for that one. Centerfold knocked out of bounds once again and again gets lapped by Herman Monster of the Philadelphia Independent Stalls. Philadelphia Independent Stalls jammer Herman Monster knocked to the outside. Ruby Ring can't quite get her out of bounds. And she completes the pass for five. Centerfold did get out of the pack, but doesn't get around for points. Notorious D.I.E. in the penalty box for the firing squad. Kick Ash in the penalty box for the Independence Dolls. Firing squad actually going to start the next jam down two blockers. Independence Dolls going to have a one blocker advantage. Young MC number 11 jamming for the independent stalls in the red. Peace of War jamming for the firing squad. Texas in the black, Philadelphia in the red. Peace of War into a two wall layout. Ali still on her feet. The Cyclone fell down, but Peace of War gets lead jammer. Young MC gets around Notorious D.I.E. but runs into Sideshow Ho and now it's a two wall. Notorious D.I.E. and Sideshow Ho holding back the Philly Jammer, knocking her all the way to the back and now helped out by Virgo Vengeful. But Young MC getting nowhere. Peace War, the Jammer for Texas, through the pack and last point of contact is the Cyclone. Completes the pass, five points for Texas. <laughs> Young MC still at the back of the pack. The jammer for Philadelphia still on her initial pass. Peace War on scoring pass number two. Kick Ash and lay out Ali in front of her. But a forearm penalty sends Peace War to the penalty box. Lay out Ali was knocked down, but the referee says it was a forearm that did it. This means it's a power jam. And the period clock has expired, so this will be the final jam. Young MC coming out, gets five points for that. Executioner's defense setting up in front of the Philly blockers. Second scoring pass for Young MC of the Philly Independence Dolls. Runs into a three wall. Nor Notorious DIE dropping back to bridge. Sandy Ravage, Sideshow Ho, and Virgo Vengeful holding on to the Philly. <laughs> and now the Cyclone comes across and clears out Notorious DIE. But the pack was still maintained through that action. However, Young MC finally able to fight her way through. But Texas holding Philadelphia to only about one and a half scoring passes on that power on that penalty kill. So power jam over for Philly. Peace War back in and on another scoring pass. 
Wendy Whiplash and Layout Alley able to keep her in the pack, but Peace Ward does pick up all five points. Nice job by Virgo Vengeful during that jam. Not only instrumental in playing defense and offense for the firing squad, also very track aware in noting when exactly she needed to help bridge out for her team, either forward and backward. Fans, we're gonna head to the half now. Texas leading by a score of 138 to 78. We'll be back in less than 10 minutes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. You are watching track one at the Big O Live here in Eugene, Oregon. Texas Firing Squad taking on the Independence Dolls for the Philadelphia Roller Girls. Uh, quick penalty update. In the first half, Texas with 19 penalties. Uh, of note, Dolores Fuertes with four, Notorious D.I.E. with three. For Philly, 15 first half penalties. Legend of the Hit and Trample and Lex Ray Specs, each with three. Lee Jammers, Texas doubling up Philly 16 to eight in that department. And Texas benefiting from one power jam, Philly from three. While we've got time, I'm gonna recap the rosters one more time. For the firing squad, number zero, Booty Queen, 10B Money, 202, Debella DeBall, 230, Barbie Got Back, 310, Notorious D.I.E., 404, Peace War, 410, Babyface Assassin, 505, Dolores Fuertes, 51, Shiner Blonde, 52, Ruby Ring, 77, Centerfold, 808, Sideshow Ho, 812, Cease and Assist, 86, Sandy Ravage, and 914, Virgo Vengeful. For the Independence Dolls, number 11, Young MC, 1369, Wendy Whiplash, 152, Herman Monster, 1800 is Suicide Hotline, 21, Leia Out Ali, 300, Long John, 33, Legend of the Hit and Trample, 357, Trixie Trauma, 37, Lex Ray Specs, 63, The Cyclone. 67, Slam Shine Alley, 88, Kong, A55 is Kick Ash, and UH0H, Zip Block. Supposedly, we are about 30 seconds from getting this second half underway. On your screen there, you see the Texecutioners warming up alongside the Liberty Bells. That bout coming up here shortly. Fans, we are hoping that you have enjoyed the production of the Big O on WFTDA.TV. We still have a full day of derby action that will be coming to you live. Three tracks worth of action. And remember, that will all conclude later this evening with the Big O MVPs taking on the Team USA Challenge team at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And you know what? I just got the pun of Sandy Ravage. <laughs> I wondered if, uh, if I think it was Randy Poffo was, uh, was his given name. I wonder if he hailed from the Texas area. <laughs> well, it's early in the morning, so some, some of these more subtle puns <laughs> are gonna get lost on me. That's fair. Suicide Hotline lining up to jam for the Independence Dolls. 23 points to her credit so far. She opposite number 230, Barbie Got Back, who has 62 of the firing squad's points. Just in my defense, it does sound like a, it could be someone's actual name, maybe, you know. <laughs> Barbie Got Back jamming for Texas. Looking for the outside lane. Sees and assist, opened up a little hole, and Barbie got back, was able to take advantage, gets away. Suicide hotline, shoulder checks, sees and assist out of the way, and gets around Dolores, where there's both jammers out of the pack. 
Barbie got back. It's a glancing blow from Slam Shine Alley, but gets all the way through, calls it off, hit it, and quit it. Well, and a nice clearing move from the outside to the inside by a notorious D.I.E. providing the offense from the firing squad. Nice maneuver. Looks like Peace War lining up to jam for the firing squad. 50 points so far this game. Opposite Herman Munster, who has 18. Penalty box is clear, so it's five on five on the track right now. Herman Monster dodging around a fallen teammate. A couple of fallen teammates to run into Sideshow Owen. Oh, Virgo Vengeful moving up the inside, but Peace War got out first. But tries to defend a little bit against Herman Monster, but doesn't not too successfully, so she's gonna call it off. No joy for Philly. Herman Monster coming out of that pack was looking to actually lay that hit, was successful in overtaking and forcing that jam to be called off early. F and ref lined up on the outside ref lane. Babyface Assassin against Young MC. Babyface Assassin for uh, for Texas. This is a Texas firing squad, the B team, and the Philly Independent Stalls. That is the B team from Philadelphia. Both jammers just leaning into a scrum, a thicket of blockers. Babyface Assassin almost gets around the outside, but caught by the Cyclone. Now a quick move, a quick dash out front. Slam Shine Alley makes last contact, but Babyface Assassin is off to the races. She's got lead jammer. Young MC knocked to her knees by, by B Money, but picks herself back up, runs into a three wall now. Sandy Ravage, Dolores Huertes, and Notorious D.I.E. forming that three wall as Babyface Assassin moves up the outside, gets a grand slam for Texas. Texas in the black, Philadelphia in the red. Dolores Fuertes was responsible for that exit hit on Young MC, who has passed the star cap. It's Wendy Whiplash, now the scorer for Philadelphia. Young MC decided she had enough, but Babyface Assassin to come through a third time in another Grand Slam. 15 points for Texas. Wendy Whiplash gets a vicious sternum check from the shoulder of Sandy Ravage, but picks herself back up again and gets through the pack this time. But that was only her initial pass. No points for Philly. Babyface Assassin with a flourish calls off the jam, settles for two points in that last scoring pass. Late track cut call going to send Sandy Ravage to the penalty box for the firing squad. That is going to give the Independence Dolls a four to three blocker advantage to start the next jam. That is Long John on the jam line for the Independence Dolls. Opposite number 808 Sideshow Ho for the firing squad. Two blockers in the penalty box. That's B Money and Sandy Ravage in the penalty box for Texas. So four on two pack advantage. Long John back and forth, runs into Virgo Vengeful who stumbles, but season assist is there to catch the gap. But Long John able to get around both of those blockers. Lead jammer goes to Philly. Sideshow Ho grabs a shirt whip. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was season assist shirt, but it was <laughs> kind of hard to see. But uh, Long John diving through a very sparse pack, easily getting four points for Philly. I think that jersey whip came courtesy of Centerfold. Now, what was interesting at the start of that jam, Sideshow Ho lined up in front of Long John. The whistles blew, neither jammer moved because Sideshow Ho playing defense with her, with her team down, two blockers. Barbie got back on the jam line for firing squad, and that is 1800 Sioux Eastside Hotline. Still a four on two pack advantage, but Texas's blockers are standing in the penalty box at the first whistle, and now they're back in. It's five on five, but Barbie got back, driven all the way back to turn four. Races ahead, Cyclone with last contact, forces her out of bounds, but doesn't get behind her. Barbie got back, able to get back in, and dukes around the Cyclone to get lead jammer for Texas. Suicide hotline, the jammer for Philadelphia, behind a three wall. 
Notorious D.I.E. Sandy Ravage and B. Money holding her back, driving her to the rear of the pack as Barbie got back the jammer for Texas on her first scoring pass. Gets around the Cyclone and Tr Trixie Trauma for a grand slam. And there goes Suicide Hotline through the penalty box. A high block. That high block picked up in turn three. Power jam four firing squad. Barbie got back, touches a knee to the floor, but gets all five points as she continues this scoring this scoring pass marathon of Texas. There's another one, a glancing blow with the hip of Trixie Trauma, knocks down Barbie got back. It was enough. Both skaters fell down, but Barbie got back, back on her wheels, up to the front, two wall in front, Slam Shine Alley in the side crone, Slam Shine Alley with the last hip check to send Barbie got back on her way. Another grand slam. Suicide hotline now out of the penalty box, mixing it up. So it's another short power jam. Philadelphia doing a pretty good job. Only two scoring passes while their jammer was in the penalty box, but Barbie got back getting through once again. Suicide hotline finally completing her initial pass as Barbie got back, does one more weave through the pack four more for Texas and she calls it direction of play penalty at the end of that jam assessed to Sandy Ravage she will be reporting to the penalty box putting the independence dolls in a four to three blocker advantage to start the next jam 24 points in that last jam and we look to have an official timeout down on the track. All of the skaters are lined up. Young MC on the jam line for the Independence Dolls. And that is Peace War once again taking the star for the firing squad. Don't even remember. This is still the first period. 40, that's incredible. 40 points in a jam is really oh, strong. Oh, I figured out why we have the official timeout. The, uh, the scoreboard appears to have gone offline here <laughs> in the venue, and as that serves as the period clock and jam clock, um, play will not be resuming until that computer reboots itself. So if this was, this is something along the lines of a TV timeout. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Should we cue the ad reel? <laughs> I can't really see the scoreboard. Hopefully that's not the blue screen of death being displayed up there. No, it's a boot screen. <laughs> Well, in addition to the scoreboard issue, you can see over there uh, just to the side of the penalty box, the head referee talking to the coaches and captains for both teams. Scoring 24 points in that last jam, also had a 20-point jam and a 21-point jam. Maybe explaining the finer points of malware and why you should uh, sweep your computer clean every once in a while. Number 914 is Virgo Vengeful of Texas. The scoreboard is just to the left of the screen when you're looking at the wide shot. So it's just off screen right there in the shot that's showing right now. And you may have seen the cheers go up from the Independence Dolls bench. They saw the scoreboard come back to life and it looks as though we may be back in business. Peace War, number 404, lining up for Texas in the black against number 11, Young MC for Philadelphia Independence Dolls in the red. Still have an official timeout. The it's been really fun to watch these V-team games yesterday, Texas and Rose, and Philly, of course, is their V-team. We've got a thumbs up down on the track. 
All right, so everything uh, looks like we're getting the thumbs up from the head referee. 23 minutes, 42 seconds remaining in the second half. Philadelphia at 82 points, 178 points for the Texas B team, the Texas firing squad. Four to three pack advantage in favor of the Independence Dolls to start this jam. There's the first whistle continuing the game. Young MC versus Peace War. Both teams, uh, well, no four on three pack advantage for Philadelphia, but Young MC getting knocked out of bounds by Centerfold and Vir Virgo Vengeful. Forcing her way ahead. Centerfold just getting it to the edge, but Young MC staying in bounds. But there is Peace War on her first scoring pass, now lapping the Philadelphia Jammer and gets through the pack, dodging a hip check from Kick Ash. Grand slam for Texas. Young MC, the Philly Jammer, gets knocked to the infield, has to recycle all the way out of turn three as Peace War comes back in again. Second scoring pass for Texas. Knocks down zip block. Kick Ash and Long John unable to get in front of her. Peace War gets another grand slam. 10 points so far for Texas. Young MC still at the back of the pack behind Booty Queen. Peace War catches up. One blocker in her way. That's zip block of Philadelphia, who is doing a great job at Peace War, able to find that inside lane. I think they were getting a little close to the end of the engagement zone. We have a cap pass for the Liberty or for the Independence Dolls to Long John, now the jammer of record for Philly. And she's up at the front, but Virgo Vengeful, Booty Queen, Sandy Ravage, and Centerfold, all four of them forcing Long John out of bounds. Peace War, the jammer for Texas, in the black, getting a shoulder check from Kong that sends her to the outside lane. And Kick Ash picks her up there, but she weaves her way past, it get, it bounces off a hip check from Zip Block, but goes out of bounds. Centerfold to the penalty box on a forearm penalty. Peace War still on a scoring pass. Doesn't see Long John coming up, or maybe just doesn't care. Long John now on a scoring pass, but get, Sandy Ravage knocks her out of bounds. She has to recycle. Of course, Peace War now is on her fourth scoring pass, if I'm not mistaken. Well, now during that jam, Ziploc had done a nice job of defense against Peace War. In fact, during Peace War's first scoring pass, uh, Ziploc basically had her dead to rights. Young MC trying to traverse the pack accidentally took out Ziploc during that jam, which freed Peace War on that scoring pass. Babyface Assassin on the jam line. And I believe that's Herman Munster for the Independence Dolls. And interestingly, Texas quite far ahead of Philadelphia, but it seems like the majority of the jams, they have at least one blocker in the penalty box. They've consistently been getting penalties, but they are outscoring more than two to one against Philly. Babyface Assassin is lead jammer, now lapping Herman Monster. Herman Monster trying to get up on the inside. Notorious D.I.E. stumbles. Centerfold gets a shoulder check, stays in front, and now sees end assist and Centerfold getting a double team, but they run out of room and a free pass for Herman Monster. But Babyface Assassin already lapping the opposing jammer once, gets it again. A grand slam hits the pack on another scoring pass. Settles for one as she calls off the jam. On well, Texas outscoring Philly by a score of 66 to seven so far this half. Texas with six lead jams. Philly only one so far. So now 204 for Texas, 85 for Philly. And there's a familiar lineup. Suicide hotline against Barbie got back. Four on three in the pack in favor of the Independence Dolls. Suicide hotline looking for the outside lane for Philly. Barbie got back of Texas, driving straight up the center. Knocks down Trixie Trauma. The Cyclone hangs on for a bit, but Barbie got back his lead jammer once again for Texas. Suicide hotline driven out of bounds on the outside. Now slams her shoulder into the back of Virgo Vengeful, knocking her down and gets a back block. It's gonna be a power jam for Texas. Virgo Vengeful again, making her presence known in the backfield. Great defender for the firing squad. There goes Centerfold, the last blocker missing from Texas. So Texas back at full strength as Barbie got back, hits the back on a scoring pass, knocked down, makes, gets tangled up with Ruby Ring, her teammate, who goes to the penalty box. Not for hitting her jammer, but for something else bad she did. 
Another grand slam for Barbie Got back of Texas. Centerfold in action. Trying to sweep across that wall, open up a lane, but Barbie Got Back is just going to do it all herself. Anyway, Philadelphia resilient to Centerfold's attempt to break up their wall. But that was the end of the power jam. Only two scoring passes for Texas, and now the Philly Jammer back on the track. The suicide hotline, though, still on her initial pass, knocked out of bounds and had to recycle. Centerfold during work during this jam, defending and providing offense for her jammer for the firing squad. Barbie got back coming up on yet another scoring pass. This time runs into a solid defense from Philadelphia. But Shiner Blonde does a great job of picking the Philadelphia blockers. But Barbie got back does get caught on at the top of the turn. Calls off the jam from her back. Centerfold and Ruby Ring running a great uh, two blocker defense in the back of the pack there for Texas. Great job working together those two. Zip block taking the star for what I believe the first time for the independent stalls and she will be jamming against 808 side show ho for the firing squad. Penalty box is empty though, it's five on five right now. Just under 18 minutes remaining in the game. Zip block on the inside behind Booty Queen, but a quick acceleration around the outside of Booty Queen. She is lead jammer, zip block of the Philadelphia Independent Stalls. Sideshow Ho gets a running start at the pack, but get instantly into a morass of Philadelphia defense. Trying to get her on the outside, but Kick Ash knocks her out of bounds as Zip Block, the Philadelphia Jammer, on a scoring pass. Now, once again, one on one with Booty Queen, who can't hold on. They get to the end of the engagement zone, and it's a free pass for Zip Block, a grand slam for Philly. And a little leap across the infield, and Zip Block goes wide, but stays in and completes the pass again. 10 points for Philly. Sideshow Ho still on her initial pass, finally ducks under a shoulder check from Wendy Whiplash to complete her initial pass but no points yet for Texas. Third scoring pass for Zip Block. Gets forced out of bounds by Dolores Fuertes. And calls off the jam three more points, a 13 point jam for Philly. Impressive jam by Zip Block there, using her long legs to uh, take a very fast stride, made short work of the track once she got out on her initial and scoring passes. And then, as Bulldog alluded to, the jump uh, entering turn three into the middle of the apex between turns three and four on that scoring pass. Impressively done. Yes, yeah, she's not in the regular jammer rotation, but she was incredibly effective on that one. Now we've got Peace War on the line again for Texas, a familiar face. And Herman Monster at the front, Virgo Vengeful and B Money trying to hold on. Sandy Ravage makes it a two wall with Virgo Vengeful. But Peace War right behind trying to get around Herman Monster, but she goes down and Herman Monster gets out clean. But she's not the lead jammer. Peace War just barely edged out Herman Monster. Even though she got knocked down, she was still able to call it off, and it's a scoreless jam. Well, and a lot of that courtesy of Virgo Vengeful, nice positional blocking up front for the firing squad, holding back the Independence Dolls jammer just long enough for Texas to pick up lead jammer in that jam. We now see Centerfold wearing the star for the firing squad behind the jam line opposite 1 800 Sue Eastside Hotline. Centerfold, I think this is only her second time jamming for Texas. She's normally uh, has been normally been fielded as a blocker. Now knocked down to the inside, has to recycle, but Suicide Hotline is in the same boat. Both jammers neck and neck. Centerfold out front, Slam Shine Alley tries to catch her with a hip, but Centerfold gets out first for lead jammer. Suicide Hotline, the Philly jammer right behind. Independent stalls have lost two blockers to the penalty box so far this jam. This time, Slam Shine Alley makes a solid connection with the shoulder, forces Centerfold out of bounds. Centerfold calls off the jam and does get three for Texas. Texas 229, Philly 99, as we are less than 15 minutes to play here in the second half. Independent Stall is going to start the next jam short two blockers as we see Long John lined up on the jammer line opposite Babyface Assassin. And this time it's Philadelphia in the penalty hole. Only two blockers on the track. Babyface Assassin behind Herman Monster. And they run out of room. The referee gets the double arms. That means no pack. 
So Babyface Assassin with a free pass and lead jammer. Booty Queen reporting to the penalty box for the firing squad. Long John completing her initial pass, but Babyface Assassin right behind her with four points for Texas. Jam called off by Babyface Assassin. Wendy Whiplash standing in the penalty box for the Independence Dolls. She will be released uh, very shortly in the next jam as she obviously has less than 10 seconds to serve. Firing squad's booty queen in the penalty box. Three on three to start the next jam. Young MC on the jam line, opposite Peace War. Indeed, four on three, no, four, three on three pack. Right now, a Booty Queen still in the penalty box. Peace War gets around the Cyclone. They were way out of the pack, so a free pass there. Young MC escapes Sideshow Ho to complete her initial pass, and now doing a little st skate maintenance on her way into the pack. Peace War rams into the pack, calls off the jam. She was knocked out of bounds and is only going to get two points. And uh, Young MC is going to win with four. Well, as you said, she she leaned down and was looked like she was tying her skate there as she entered turn one really low. And it looked like she may have been undetected by the opposing blockers as she skated into that turn initially. Barbie got back on the jam line opposite Herman Monster. Barbie got back immediately, sends that shoulder into Kong, opens up a tiny opening. Lex Ray Specs makes last contact, but Barbie got back and just shoves her aside with her own shoulder and gets out for lead jammer. Herman Monster out front, one on one with Booty Queen, but Booty Queen too far ahead. Free pass for Herman Monster, but Barbie got back. The jammer for Texas on a scoring pass. Legend of the Hit and Trample and Trixie Trauma unable to stop her. Four points for Texas. Herman Monster, though, getting through and matching those four. Barbie got back with a leap across the infield, completes that scoring pass very quickly. Four more, so Texas is going to win that jam eight to four. While well, the firing squad choosing to keep that jam rolling, they originally had a four nothing point differential, decided to keep it going. Philly matched the initial four points, but on that uh, jump through turn three, Texecutioners take the eight four point advantage in that jam and we now have a team timeout being called by the firing squad. The clock frozen at 11 minutes 28 seconds with Philly at 107 points, Texas at 243. Of course these are the B teams for those respective uh, leagues. The A teams, the all-star teams for both of these leagues are going to play, be playing next. They, we already saw them warming up at the halftime. Well, and for the second half stats here, we have Texas 13 lead jams, Philly 2. Texas having the benefit of two power jams so far in this half, Philly yet to have one. And Texas outscoring Philly by a score of 95 to 28 here in the second half of play. Texas running away with it right now. Impressive performance by the firing squad. That ends the team timeout. The, that is the first team timeout taken by Texas. So both teams have one timeout, or sorry, two timeouts remaining. One, two, what's the deal? Side of Suicide Hotline and Sideshow Ho, neck and neck at the front of the pack, but Texas has two blockers out front. Shiner, Blonde, and Seize and Assist held up Suicide Hotline just long enough for Sideshow Ho to clinch lead jammer. Sideshow Ho just barely ahead of Suicide Hotline as they enter the pack, but she calls it off. They're both going to score one point. Lay out Ali, whistled to the penalty box late in that last jam. That's going to give the firing squad a 4-3 blocker advantage to start. Zip block returning to the jam line for the Independence Dolls. Opposite Peace War for the firing squad. Philly 
There's the whistle and no motion yet. And now zip block ramming a shoulder into Peace War. And that gets things going. But zip block right up the center. Just that Texas got scrambled a little bit. It's a breakfast word, as you said, Mike, Mike checks. <laughs> and she's got lead jammer, but right behind her, Peace War. Zip block just ramming a shoulder home, but falling down in the process. Calls off the jam from her back. Gets two points for Philly, but three. Three points for Texas. Well, Zip Block now two for two, picking up lead jammer for the Independence Dolls, and that was a big shoulder she laid into Virgo Vengeful for the firing squad at the end of that jam. Barbie got back lined up to jam four, firing squad. She opposites Kong for the Independence Dolls. No, that's Khan. No. I instantly got the uh, William Shatner image in my head when I saw <laughs> when you said that. But Barbie got back, gets lead jammer. Kong, the jammer for Philadelphia, knocked down by Dolores Fuertes, and now knocked out of bounds by the same skater, Dolores Fuertes, number 505 of Texas. Firing squad losing Shiner Blonde and Ruby Ring to the penalty box as that jam whistled to an end. And for Barbie, that's 125 points to her credit so far this game. Now, what is this? We have both teams lining up at or near the pivot line. So both jammers will get a little bit of a runway. Slam Shine Alley against Centerfold. Slam Shine Alley, this is her first time jamming. She's been blocking quite a bit. But now jamming for the first time in the game, runs it to the Notorious D.I.E., dodges around the outside, gets lead jammer for Philadelphia. Centerfold, the jammer for Texas in the black against a three wall, Kick Ash, Wendy Whiplash, and Lex Ray Specs. Lex Ray Specs guards her on the outside, but runs out of room. Free pass for Centerfold, but here's Sam Shine Alley for Philadelphia on a scoring pass, one on one with Sandy Ravage, gets knocked out of bounds. Calls off the jam and only gets two points for Philadelphia, but nothing for Texas. Slam Shine Alley able to take advantage of the 4-2 blocker advantage that the Independence Dolls had for a majority of that jam. The penalty box did clear out at the end of that jam. Now we've got Long John lined up on the jam line for the Independence Dolls. Her opposition is Babyface Assassin. Yeah, we couldn't see her at all, so it must have been Babyface Assassin, right? <laughs> Babyface Assassin sneak attack up the outside. She was right behind Layout Ali, but I, I'll lay out Ali did not even see her. So she just snuck right through, got lead jammer. Well, for the Independence Dolls, this is the seventh different jammer they've sent out in a row. And Long John in the penalty box, so it's a power jam for Babyface Assassin. She's on her first scoring pass, gets knocked down by Trixie Trauma and Layout Ali. Has to recycle back a bit. She gets around Trixie Trauma. Trixie Trauma going to the penalty box now, so now it's a three wall Layout Ali and Ziploc in the tandem formation. Ziplock, a big hit on the jammer. She is now assessed a direction of play penalty. And Babyface Assassin gets around the Cyclone to complete the pass, but that ends the power jam. Philadelphia holding them to just one scoring pass. Long John gets around Virgo Vengeful and B Money to complete her initial pass. Babyface Assassin coming around again. At front, the Cyclone and Leia out Ali, slowing her down but not stopping her. Babyface Assassin calls it off for four more for Texas. Cyclone going to be reporting to the penalty box, as is Dolores Fuertes. Looked like both of them assessed pack penalties. So firing squad with a big advantage to start this next jam. Kong all by herself as a blocker for Philadelphia against three Texas blockers. Peace War just uh, slides across the pack and gets around Kong easily. But Herman Monster able to get around the three Texas blockers as well. Both jammers now on a scoring pass. 
piece war knocked to the side by Trixie Trauma, fresh out of the penalty box. And now Ziploc coming in to join the fun, a three wall now, but Peace War able to fight her way right through that Philadelphia defense, gets four points. Herman Monster still on her, scoring pass, gets past Sideshow Ho and Booty Queen to complete the pass. Matching those four points by Peace War, but now Peace War finds the inside lane. A little help from Sideshow Ho, who picks the Philadelphia blocker, and it's an eight to four jam for Texas. Well, Bulldog, you pointed out at the beginning of that jam that Kong was the only blocker of record on the track for the Independence Dolls. And while it is true that the Firing Squad jammer got around her quickly, what I wanted to point out was that Kong did something extremely smart there, switched up to offense and got her jammer freed merely seconds after giving up lead jam. Nice job by Kong. Probably the best thing she could have done in that situation. Exactly. Barbie got back jamming for Texas. Number number two, three, zero gets around Slam Shine Alley, and she's lead jammer. Young MC, number 11, jamming for Philadelphia, knocked out of bounds by Centerfold. Now comes back in, dodges around Centerfold, but gets picked up by Ruby Ring and Virgo Vengeful. Pops right back up though, and off to the races. She's out of there. Barbie got back on her first scoring pass. Young MC making her way around to try and match it, but Barbie got back. Calls off the jam just in time. Four to zero, Texas. Well, and for Barbie, that was her 134th through 137th point in this game. Four on four in the pack. We have a clear penalty box for now. Babyface assassin on the jam line opposite Sue Eastside hotline. And it's five on five, a full pack. Long Suicide Hotline with a big shoulder check to Babyface Assassin right off the whistle. And now both jammers getting running into four walls. Notorious D.I.E. drops back to bridge for Texas. Suicide Hotline now only has two blockers, gets around, sees and assist. Centerfold holds on. Now sees and assist. Can't keep the Philly Jammer in the hole. It's grand, it's up. Lee Jammer for Philadelphia. Babyface Assassin still on her initial pass, clobbered to the outside, but comes back in and gets around Legend of the Hit and Trampled to complete her initial pass. But Suicide Hotline on a scoring pass, fighting her way through a big crowd. All blockers were surrounding her. She was, she was like, a, they were like a bunch of pigs bosons, you know? Well, that huge pile. That huge pileup in turn three that you saw there on your screen, uh, no blockers whistled to the penalty box as a result of that pileup. What we do have is we do have one blocker in the penalty box for Texas to start the next jam. Can't quite see the number over there. Zip block two for two, picking up lead jammer, returns to the jam line for the independent stalls. Barbie got back, uh, glancing hip check from Kong. Barbie got back, runs into Slam Shinella, but Slam Shinella fell down and Barbie got back, just had to tiptoe around her. Gets the lead jammer, but Ziploc out of the pack, half a lap behind. Barbie got back, but Barbie got back, leaps across that infield, lands in front of the Cyclone, out of the pack, gets four for Texas. Well, the Cyclone and Herman Monster thought they had that line guarded, nicely timed jump and landing. Now Texas with 278, Philly at 1.21. Lex Ray Specs lining up for Philadelphia in the red against Peace War, number 404 for Texas. Four on three pack advantage for Philadelphia. Peace War back and forth, but Philly keeping up with her, staying in front. But Lex Ray Specs knocked out, oh, just on her toe stop, staying in bounds and does it, somehow hanging on by a thread, but this time gets knocked out by Sandy Ravage and gets the outside pack ref, sees it, calls the, calls the cutting the track, and it's a power jam for Peace War. Well, and Sideshow Ho being sent to the penalty box, it looked to be a direction of play penalty. But Texas with the advantage, the only scorer on the track. That's one scoring pass in this power jam already. Kickash and Legend of the Hit and Trample stumble over each other. The Kickash back on her feet, gets in front of Peace War, but only slows her down a little bit. 
Juke to the inside. It's the second scoring pass in this power jam. 10 points so far for Texas. Power jam almost over as the Independence Dolls jammer standing in the penalty box. Juke to the outside, gets Peace War around Kickash a third time, a third Grand Slam, 15 points for Texas, and the power jam is over as Lex Ray Specs, the jammer for Philadelphia, returns to play. Penalty he instantly box. gets picked up by B Money of Texas. Penalty box fully empty now, all 10 skaters on the track. Lex Ray Specs still on her initial pass, and now Peace War doing a little defensive jamming but gets knocked to the back of the pack by Wendy Whiplash. Lex Ray Specs out front. Counter checks Sandy Ravage, but gets caught at the front by Sideshow Ho. Gets around her, she's completed her initial pass, but Peace War is gonna call it off for it with another Grand Slam. Well, and the Texecutioners choosing to run out the period clock and then call off the jam. This game is over, our score is unofficial, but we've got the Texas B team the firing squad victorious over the Philly Roller Girls Independence Dolls. Very hard hitting bout by both of these teams. And you see the firing squad taking their victory lap right there. Unofficially, we've got Barbie at 133 points, Peace War 103. And now the Independence Dolls taking their portion of the victory lap as well. So Firing Squad, big win over the Independence Dolls. They have had two. Big wins this weekend so far. Folks, we are gonna kick it over to the Derby Deeds event desk for some post-game analysis here in just a few moments. Make sure you stick around because on this very track coming up at 11 o'clock will be the A-teams for both of these leagues, the Texecutioners taking on the Liberty Bells. Make sure you stick around for that. And remember, we've got two more tracks full of action, derby action all day. Fans, thank you for watching us on WFTDA-TV. Stay tuned for the Derby Deeds Event Desk.